worshipping with us this morning. We pray that our time together will be a source of inspiration and renewal as we sing praise to our Heavenly Father and give Him thanks for His many blessings on us. Our worship this morning is from the Book of Alternative Services. Seek the Lord while He wills to be found. Call upon Him when He draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. The penitential rite is found on page 45. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our opening hymn, is just as I am. Page 49. 
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a letter of for the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the of the earth, and the mighty universe The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and the knee, and the young the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our next hymn, Take Time Out for Jesus. up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the earth. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearts. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, who heals the broken heart. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings prince to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them away, carries them off like the stubble. 
To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my night is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the hands of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 26, You Are God, on page 94. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbound, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, and did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this on my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this. That it that is my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law, to those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the, win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsory number four, page 103. In my mouth he has put a new song, praise to our God. In my mouth he has put a new song, praise to our God. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard me cry. Praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Praise to our God. I love to do your will, O my God. Your law is deep in my heart. Praise to our God. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips. Praise to our God. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In my mouth, just by the new song, praise to our God. And our gradual hymn is, O Firm a Foundation. about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. He would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came here to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Over the past few weeks, our gospel passages have shown a fast-paced movement of Jesus since coming to Galilee. The calling of the disciples to be fishers of people. In the synagogue, teaching with authority. Teaching, preaching, and healing. His name, his acts of healing, his words of assurance and forgiveness are spreading, and as we are told this morning, they brought to him all who were sick, and the whole city was gathered around the door. 
So it shouldn't surprise us that in the midst of all that is going on around him, that Jesus has, in fact, must make time to find a solitary place to pray. Jesus doesn't have a nine to five job. We are told that his ministry continues into the evening hours as he models the same servant attitude as Simon's mother-in-law, who got from her sick bed to serve a meal to her guests. And we heard that Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. People have a need. And Jesus has compassion and care for all people. So he helps all who come to him. I'm sure there are times all of us are overwhelmed by all the things and people who daily want a share of our time and talents. There's work. There's meetings, there's housework, there's spending quality time with loved ones, there's volunteering and giving a helping hand to those who need some assistance. Serving can be exhausting. And when we get tired, when we feel that we are pushed ourselves to the point of exhaustion, we often forget the reason we serve we forget the purpose of what we are doing for others. We find it a burden, and that is not serving with the heart of Jesus. I'm sure that Jesus was no different from us in many ways. After teaching in a synagogue, being criticized by those in authority, and then being swamped by so many people who are sick, and others who just want to see or hear Jesus, it's not surprising that he needed time for himself, time to put things back into perspective. So the next day, Jesus got up early while it was still dark and goes to a deserted place to pray. We are told many times in scripture that Jesus goes off by himself to pray to his father. He prays, experiencing God's presence and will for him. These periods of being in God's presence seem to renew his energy, strengthen his resolve, and clarify the issue in his ministry. We too need quiet time with God to hand over to him what troubles us, what bothers us, Time to get our thoughts and feelings back into perspective. Like Jesus, we all need that quiet time. That time when we can put aside the things that bring us down. The things that seem to have us going around in circle. We need to make time. We need to find time to be alone with God. To bring him our concerns, our needs, our praise, and our thanksgiving. Mark uses the word immediately often, and we live in a world where everything needs to have been done yesterday, and where everything that happens we know right away. We forget the beautiful words from Psalm 46, which encourages us to be still and know God. We forget that we need to recharge our batteries, that we need quiet time, not only to renew our physical being, but also to be renewed mentally and spiritually. Being still, finding a quiet time is God's will for our lives. Our Lord went to a solitary place for a reason, to pray. Prayer is not giving God a list of things that we need for him to do. Prayer is a time of communion with God. It is being in his presence, spending time with him. It might involve asking for things. It might involve thanking him for things. It might simply be a time in his presence. Be still and know that I am God. 
Have you ever simply spent time with someone and you were both quiet? Not really saying all that much, just quietly being together. Perhaps with your spouse, at the bedside of a friend or family member, or just holding your child or grandchild in your arms. Be still and know that I am God. We will rarely find God in the hectic moments in our lives, but we will often find God in the quiet moments. Mother Teresa once said, God is rarely found in the midst of noise and restlessness. Instead, he is the friend of silence. In his human nature, Jesus felt the same emotions you and I feel. He could feel our pain and our failure, our worries and our disappointment, but he never lost faith in his Father's love and strength. But unlike us who forget that we are not in control, Jesus knew he could always count on God being there with him, with him to the good, and the bad, the happy and the sad, through all the trials and the tribulations. If Jesus understood how important it was to be alone with God, how can we not do the same thing? Jesus came to live among us, to be an example, the main example of how we should live our lives a model of how to handle the pressures and disappointments of life. Those pressures and disappointments that drain us physically and spiritually, that leave us feeling empty and afraid, making it seem as if our total lives have lost all meaning and purpose. We see that Jesus was able to handle the pressures of his ministry because he had a strong life of prayer. Jesus took time out of his busy schedule to talk with God. He always found a time and a place to be alone with the Father. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see Jesus pray? To see how he prayed? We know that the disciples wanted to know how to pray. They came right out and asked him, Lord, why don't you teach us to pray the way John taught his disciples how to pray? What did Jesus tell them? Jesus gave them the words of the so familiar Lord's Prayer. Jesus tells them, and us as well, that we have to be persistent in prayer, not giving up when we think that God doesn't hear because he doesn't answer as quickly as we would like. God answers prayer, but in his own time and in his own way. As God's own children, we are in a unique and very special position. We, don't, we have the privilege of knowing that God is ready to take care of us. We also need the ti quiet time in prayer, a time to talk with God. Each day we have events that drain us physically and spiritually. It could be illness, our own or a loved one. It could be financial worries. It could be worry about a child or a grandchild. It could be anything that makes us feel we are carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. Often taking quiet time, a time to pray, a time to hand our cares over to God can give us an inner peace that we didn't have before. It may give us a new perspective, a new energy to face whatever the day throws at us. Dear God, open our hearts and minds to your presence in our daily lives. May we take some quiet time this and every day to come before you in prayer, to be spiritually renewed by your holy presence in our lives. Amen. Our next hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Apostles' Creed, page 52. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the People, Litany number 2, page 112. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct our church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudices, selfishness, and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free who are, who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In the Lord's Prayer on page 54. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The colic for today. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now have the hymn, Have Thine Own Way.
on page 129. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of your whole creation and for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments we satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. May your day be blessed by moments of quietness, light in your darkness, strength in your weakness, grace in your meekness, joy in your gladness, peace in your stillness. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And we'll conclude our time of worship with Lord whose love in humble service. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.